Hey Adventures, so today is going to be another book review. This is going to be for Chaos Bound by David Farland. This is book eight in the Rune Lord series. It's an epic fantasy, it's a high fantasy, a lot of the same subgenres that we come across with with all the previous seven books in this series. So Chaos Bound is the last published book in the Rune Lord series. I say the last published because there is technically a book nine that has not been released and I don't think it's been finished either, um, but clearly it's not the end of the series. As much as it is the last book that we have, it's not the end of the series. This book was meant to, meant as a way for us to catch up on what certain characters have been up to during the time spent um, away from them in books six and seven. And it just helps us to lead up to this great finale with book nine, if book nine, nine is ever released. As such, there's really little, very little resolution that is happening to in this book for the series as a whole, although there is some setup for that resolution and we can see the path forward, we just don't know how things will actually exactly play out. That's, that's the problem with it being a book eight of a nine book series and the ninth book not being published. We really don't know how the series would actually end. Things like characters who survive or die or what the actual fallout of the ending of the series is. We don't know how that's all gonna work. But I'm still going to review this book because I've read the entire series up to now and I've enjoyed every book. But before I get into the main body of my review here, I'd just quickly like to say that if you're liking what you're seeing from an erudite adventure, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like, comment, and subscribe. So, all of that being said, even without that ending, meaning book nine, this was a great book. Uh, getting a chance to go back and catch up with Borenson and his family was fantastic, and uh, you really do finally realize that although he's not the main character of the individual books, he is in many ways the main character of the series, or, or the heart of the series if you want to put it that way. This is very much an adventure story, but not good adventures necessarily. It's literally a quest for survival is what this book ends up being. And that is really what this entire series has become. But this book especially, we are thrown into a situation where the world has changed so much but the characters we are following know nothing about the change or how or why it's how it's different or why it's changed or how it works or anything like that so the characters are literally just thrust into something that they don't understand and they're learning along with us and us being the readers who have read books five and or books six and seven actually know more than the characters do at this point once again we see the brutality of this world uh, and the skill of its warriors but we are also seeing we're also shown the weakness and fragility that are that they are exposed to without the use of endowments. Uh, the endowments, of course, is the part of the magic system, and it is part of the world that we have explored the most over. It, it is the part of the world that we've explored the most over the past nine or eight books. Not that we're exploring different facets of it or anything like that. We're just continually having more and more conversations regarding endowments. Relationships are strained in ways that are completely unimaginable due to the changes in the world. You wouldn't, like, to our minds, these these questions could never even come up because it's completely impossible. Yet in this world, the way that things have changed, they are now having to ask these questions and you have to try and find answers to them when you don't have the answers because the world is so different. We really want nothing more than to see Mirama and Borenson's family to succeed and to survive. And while we do still have moments of hope, there's also devastation. The character work in this book, I think, is really incredible, and the way that we are seeing the meaning of and conflict of two minds in is so interesting, and I think that it's really well done. It's a purposely keeping it very vague because uh, that's a major point of this so series of this uh, book specifically and how it works, but it's really interesting, and and people people talk about this series. The, the few people that I have seen talk about the series at all really think that it's the first four books are great and the second four, eh, they're kind of really strange. And yes, they are really strange, but it's really good strange in my opinion. And as Farland does so brilliantly, he brings back things from the early books that you didn't realize would be important and maybe you'd even forgotten about them. But now they play a hugely pivotal role uh, there's callback backs to book one over and over again. You're really seeing the series come full circle in many ways, and that's just so cool to me how, how Farland is able to do that while still pushing the story forward. This is one of my favorite books in the series. I think I'd probably put it as number four, uh, as my fourth favorite of the series, though 
uh, it could pretty easily take or tie for number three. Even if we never get book nine though, this series was a joy to read and gave us one of the most intricate and interesting magic systems that I've ever read. Plus, the discussions along the way, both the discussions that are had in the book, as well as the discussions that I had with uh, with Nico and uh, Liam, who were also reading the series at the same time as me. The, so both of those discussion types of discussions, in world and out of world, are so interesting. Were there were great discussions to have, and then the depth of wisdom that was shared throughout these books. This this fourth book or this eighth book specifically, there was some very hard hitting conversations that were being had and very uh, important conversations that I don't see had enough, whether in fantasy or in real life either. And it's just, it was just amazing to see how well they were done in the series. Definitely, I think that it's well worth the time I spent reading it, and undoubtedly a series that I will try and revisit at some point, uh, whether the final book ever is released or not. To me, the, the series itself was well worth it whether we ever have that finale or not. And that's, to me, that's a mark of a good series. Um, will this series be in my top 10? I have no idea. If book nine ever comes out and if it hits, like even if it's as good as the other books in the series, I definitely think that yes, it, it could very possibly, very likely be in my top 10 fairly high up there. As of right now, it's probably in my top 10 series, but just because I there's so few series that I have completed or have read all of the books in up to this point. So anyways, that is my review for Chaos Bound by David Farland, book book eight of the Rune Lord series. Thank you guys for watching and Eridite Adventure. We're posting lots of videos at the moment, so we will see you guys again soon. Stay warm.